Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting Apollo session. My name is Mike Falco, and I will be your instructor or tutorialer. Yeah. Um, okay. So today we're going to have a quick video on the, the new and improved data health center within Apollo. So uh, what's nice about this video is I have a new setup here for a client um, that I haven't, you know, gone in and, and made all of the, the necessary changes so we can do it in real time. Let's get to it. So point of the dashboard, I hope this is pretty self-explanatory, but it's to understand and monitor all the things that are happening in your business and on your teams. Okay. Um, now, as soon as you log in here, they're going to ask you to connect to Salesforce or HubSpot. This is a necessary for this to work. Right. Um, and B it is able to ingest all of your deals and all of your opportunities. Here's why I like that in the past with Apollo, right? Your opportunities slash deals would either a need to be manually kind of brought over, um, or be integrated with Apollo. However, there was no intelligent, um, inferences made from those deals. It was more of an understanding for things like um, not prospecting into an account with an open op, right? Or not prospecting into a current customer account, which, you know, hand up, I think everybody's done once or twice and it's not a great feeling. But I think what's nice about this, if I'm correct in, in what I've uh, kind of studied up on, um, is that they're trying to use your historical data to make smarter decisions um, rather than Pre-account set. Okay, few dashboard. We're gonna get into all that. Um, rather than just, hey, here's your information. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this. Embark on your data health adventure. Blah, blah, blah. I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All pretty self-explanatory stuff here. Um, this is going to be a big piece of what we talk about here. Uh, it's okay. Good. And yes, understood. And schedule enrichment. Okay. Cool. So. Let's take a look and we're going to get into the schedule enrichment piece of this um, towards the end of this video, or maybe it'll be its own. Let's see how we do. Okay. So how many people are missing emails? How many people have job changes? So the job change piece here, I would just uh, offer a quick word of caution or, or uh, give it a pair of human eyes. Basically um, a lot of this can be just for example, I work with, a bunch of companies on their sales development process, but I'm also a member of Pavilion, right? So when I joined Pavilion, which is a networking group led by Sam Jacobs, it's great, uh, great sales revenue CS um, leadership at SAS networking group that I should take more advantage of. Um, so what I'm saying there is when I joined Pavilion, right? They became a quote unquote job on my LinkedIn that triggered a job change here. So just keep an eye out for things like that. Um, and this is pretty self-explanatory here, right? We're talking about job changes, number of missing emails, um, top available contacts, and uh, we got our personas in here as well. I would definitely recommend building personas out. I have a video on that uh, probably from about three weeks ago, but you can check that out. Okay, so why is this nice, right? This is nice because we no longer need to have an ops person or a rep or a manager or a director come in and decide exactly when and at what volume slash scale we're going to do a big data enrichment. So the thing about uh, enrichment is if not done properly, it can really hit your API calls. And if you're integrating with a Salesforce or a HubSpot, um, and a couple of the ops person people that I've, uh, that I've worked with in the past will definitely confirm this. Um, you can blow everything up and use up hundreds of thousands of API calls in a second if you don't do this smart. So that's why we're here. We're going to do a scheduled enrichment here, right? And we can do one of two things. We can either say, Hey, anytime there's a missing email address on a contact, please try to find it or same thing with the job change. Okay. Um, so. Let's see, we have monthly on the enrichment side, we have a credit limit. Now, what I just spoke about with APIs is covered right here. So a credit limit, right, means that we're putting a cap on the number of new data that we can find. But let's think about when APIs happen, API calls, right? That happens when there's net new or changed information on the Apollo side that pushes back to Salesforce or HubSpot, right? So a limit here, 
of, and we're on the monthly side, so let's say 20,000, right? This means that you will not have more than 20,000 Salesforce API calls due to this flow, right? Now, if you wait here and don't have a schedule, right? Um, you're then gonna wake up one day and say, hey, oh wait, you know, my data is a little bit dirty. Um, let's try to clean it up. And then you're gonna have 150,000 API calls and your ops person is gonna be really mad at you. Sorry, Hannah. Okay, uh, let's hit next here. So nickname is going to be, let's call it monthly. Uh, monthly job change. Okay, filter contacts. Now, this is what I love about Apollo, that we can filter down the number of people that this um, enrichment is run on. You could think of this very similarly to the plays in Apollo. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do a second video here because we're getting a little bit long on the advanced filtering and what I would do um, in terms of enrichment, but really nice feature from Apollo. And again, their core functionality here of being able to filter on literally everything um, is kind of what sets this tool apart for me. All right, catch, uh, catch you next time for the advanced.